So everybody, again, welcome to Mapping Philanthropy, How to Use Data Visualization to Do Good. This webinar has been co-sponsored by us here at TechSoup, and as well as the Foundation Center. We'll be talking a little bit about them near the end of today's presentation. So my name is Kyla Hunt. I'm going to be your facilitator today. I am the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup Global. And with us today is Jake Garcia and George Ford, both from the Foundation Center. Jake has worked on GIS projects for NASA, the U.S. Army, the City of New York, and Al Gore's Climate Project. And at the Foundation Center, he builds mapping applications, data visualization, semantic analysis scripts, and APIs. And in April 2011, he was the lead developer on a project that won the Large Organization Award in the World Bank's Apps for Development for development contest. So that's really, really great. We're so excited to have him here with us today. And as we also have George Ford from the Foundation Center. And he's been with the Foundation Center since March of 2004. And as product manager for online subscription services, um, including Foundation Directory Online, which we'll be hearing a lot about later on in this webinar, he's responsible for the data day-to-day -day oversight and the development of new product enhancements. So we're really excited to have George with us as well. And assisting with us on the back end is going to be Becky Wiegand from TechSoup, so you will probably see her name pop up in the chat pane. And just as a reminder, before I give control, or before we do a little bit of polls, that you will be muted throughout today's session. So if you do need to ask any questions, you can type those questions into the questions or chat pane, and we can respond to you there. And we will be reading questions out loud as time allows during the questions break. And so a little bit about today's agenda. Jake is first going to be talking with us about just visual, visualizing philanthropy, data visualizations in general, and some different resources that are out there. And then George is going to be talking about the Foundation Directory online and giving us a little bit of a tour of that. And we will be handling questions both between the presenters and then at the end. And if we don't get to your question, we will be forwarding to the presenters to follow up with you afterwards. And so with that, we do have a poll question that we wanted to ask just before Jake got started. So let me go ahead and launch that. And this first question is how many of you currently create data visualizations? And so I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to answer that. And this is going to help Jake a lot in preparing his um, presentation and to knowing who he's speaking to. So I'm going to give you about five more seconds. It looks like 75% of you have voted. So I'm going to close it in five, four, three, two, one. So I want to go ahead and share those results with you. It looks like just 15% of you actually currently create data visualizations, and 51% um, have never created data visualizations, but at the same time, 51% um, are still looking into creating data visualizations. So hopefully that really helps Jake in knowing who he's speaking to. So thank you for answering that question. And we will also have another poll question um, before George's section. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and give Jake control of the screen. So Jake, go ahead and take it away. Great. Thank you, Kyla. Let me just launch this. Hi, uh, I'm Jake Garcia, a geographer at the Foundation Center. I'm going to show you guys a few of the visualizations uh, that we've built over here and, and show a few other uh, mapping tools and visualizations that other folks have created. And on the way, talk about a little bit about our data, uh, where it comes from, and what kind of stories that it, that it tells. Uh, first of all, the, um, the Foundation Center is, is a leading source of information about philanthropy around the world. We've got information on 105,000, sorry, yes, 105,000 global foundations uh, and, and other, other donors. And we have a database of 4.6 million grants, and that's grants they've given across the last uh, couple of decades. Um, we do lots of uh, activities, um, and George, later on, George Ford's going to talk to you about Foundation Directory Online. 
I'm going to show you a lot of the stuff that we do at, at, that, that's open to the public. Um, but we do lots of research reports. We give advisories on giving trends, build special mapping tools for, for, for clients that say a foundation might hire us to do something. And sometimes we do issue-based portals uh, on topics that we think are, are relevant and interesting. Um, where are there, uh, and this, this part might be a little bit boring, but it's, it's, it is important for the, data, for, for the kinds of things that we show is basically where our data comes from. Uh, a lot of our data, the majority of it, uh, about foundations and, and grant making comes from this form, there's a little sample here called the 990 PF. Foundations have to file it every year and in it they describe the, the grants that they give to nonprofits uh, in the US or, or, or abroad. Uh, we start with that basically and then what we end up having to do uh, is curate the data. So um, sometimes we have to, you know, scan. Sometimes it's not machine readable, so we have to basically uh, do OCR in order to get the data out of it. But then we've got folks here at the Foundation Center, about 40 of them, who basically just clean and code the grants. So, uh, you know, our taxonomy has 1,100 codes. We also code it by recipient type, population, uh, and all of this basically means once we have clean, thorough, interesting data, we can then start doing some interesting things with it. So, um, uh, so the goals for, for visualizing the data is, is to show the, the, the flow of funding to NGOs. And uh, that second point, though, is, is the most interesting. Uh, basically, we want to try to, find a, a, try to identify the places where funding might be uh, overlapping or where there are gaps in funding. Or, or you know, and I think um, and another important kind of side part of that is uh, is finding the potential for collaboration either between nonprofits or between uh, foundations. Um, now, some of this, uh, every once in a while, I'm going to show some links to things, and hopefully, when you guys get the um, get this presentation um, available in a week, you can go back and actually uh, look these up and click on them. But a very small sampling of some open data sources that you can use to help uh, put stuff in context. The World Bank has lots of great international data. U.S. government has lots of good uh, data about the U.S. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, mapping uh, data stuff here. Again, this is just for reference. Um, and then we'll talk, I'll talk for us one second about some of the problems with the data. Um, sometimes we don't have complete grant descriptions, or we don't exactly know where the, the where grants going to. Or sometimes the flow of funding is not easy to describe. And on the right there, the image you see, there's an example of a. Um, example of a grant record. It's from the Dow Chemical Company Foundation to Blue Planet Run Foundation, but uh, there's really not much in the way of description, and, and it's a global program, so it's, it's hard to map. It's hard to do anything with that. However, that's not always the case. Um, again, this one might be for reference, but sometimes in, in, in data visualization, one of the problems that, that occurs is, is that anytime you see two things in the same place, you might think, uh, they must be related to each other, or they must one must cause the other. That's not necessarily uh, the case. Uh, again, this is kind of a nerdy geographical kind of thing or, or statistical kind of analysis, but it's very important to know that sometimes when you're reading a data visualization that um, what appears to, to, to be one thing leading to another is not necessarily the case. Um, and uh, here's a couple of, of references at the bottom. There's a, a great book called How to Lie with Maps. It's a very short book, but it's really handy, uh, basically saying that maps have to have to lie because they can't represent the whole entire world perfectly. And then there's a, 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 a Tufty book. If you guys have heard of him, you should definitely check him out. And he gives presentations around, around the country every year. Uh, but his books, especially the visual display of quantitative information, are fantastic, fantastic guides. Um, and there's lots of rules of thumb in, in, in those books for creating data visualizations. So I'm going to show a few of our visualizations now. Um, this is one case. It's just called the uh, this is called the Time Slider, Foundation Time Slider. It's available on one of our sites called glasspockets.org. And the bubbles represent the amount of assets for all the foundations in each of the 50 states. So you can see California and New York there are pretty big bubbles. That's where uh, a lot of the big, uh, well-endowed foundations are located. And the color of the bubbles shows uh, the increase in the assets of those foundations from the previous year. So in this case, all of them are blue or light blue, which means that, if you look in the key on the right there, it means that, that for the most part, uh, assets went up in those uh, foundations in those states by over 15%, which is pretty dramatic. And this is 1997, during the Clinton era, uh, before the dot-com boom, but this is when uh, everything was looking pretty, uh, pretty peachy. Uh, in that same application, 
you go to 2008, that's the beginning of the housing crisis, you can see everything, uh, you know, is orangey red. That means that their assets dropped by over 15%. Those are the only two years across a, basically a 40-year period where we saw an in, a nationwide trend in foundation assets. We did not even actually realize that this story was this dramatic until we actually saw this visualization. So it's one case where we built the visualization, then found some conclusions, not the other way around. We didn't know the conclusions and then saw the visualization. We're also building something right now. Uh, this can be our open data portal. And uh, you know, I, I personally am a big fan of very simple visualizations. And this one's a little bit ugly, but I do like how simple it is. It's just a line chart. In this case, it shows that uh, funding to recipients in New York and California uh, you know, over two billion a year, and they're pretty much in lockstep, which is interesting. Look at 2001, how close they are, and they diverge a little bit by 2008. But places like Michigan and Texas, nonprofits uh, receive typically less than the nonprofits in California uh, and, and New York. And here's one just showing some of the categories of, of funding in New York. Um, and you, again, this is for recipients in New York State. Uh, arts and culture is extremely well funded in New York. And look at uh, you know science there, basically toward the bottom. It's not a trend that reflects across all the states, but you do we do find that arts funding in New York is extremely high, whereas agriculture and science funding across the board tends to be relatively lower than than, than we would have thought. Um, sometimes we also build these um, special issue portals, and this one is one we built uh, to at the at the request of. Um, of the Kellogg Foundation about grants to Haiti. And we'll see a little bit more about Haiti in, in, in a few minutes. But um, basically what we're trying to do, and each bubble represents a number of grants that went to different places in Haiti. Uh, and this is of particular interest because of the earthquake that happened there recently. So you can see that sometimes, like the bubble in the middle of the ocean, you can't really code a grant to some place because we don't exactly know where it went. But in other cases, you see an 89 there, 64, a few other things, there are some some foundations that are spending money on nonprofits for specific projects in specific locations. For instance, that 64, which you can see in the middle, most of that is to one hospital uh, in that area. Um, and basically what you want to try to do is find, uh, find some trends here. And here I, I clicked on this application. By the way, this is, you can see at the bottom, it says foundationcenter.org slash Haiti. Um, you can narrow it down by all these different categories, so these blue categories. And basically, it says, yes, a lot of money was spent on these other categories, but we go to the next one. We've included safety and disasters. And now you see the yellow bar there. Basically, safety and disasters made up $326 million out of $347 million in funding. So basically, Haiti doesn't receive that much in funding typically, but then something like a disaster occurs, then all of a sudden, lots of money will come in, and basically only one shot, only one year. Uh, I mentioned earlier one of the purposes of, of, of doing stuff like this, uh, visualizations, is, to, is to basically to make an argument. Either to dis You want to either discover something about the data or you want to help make an argument um, to, to someone else, to show them something. In this case, this shows World Bank projects in kind of the uh, greenish gold and, and, uh, and, and foundation uh, projects by, by the amount of money um, in, in 2003, 2005, and 2007. And World Bank spends a lot more money than foundations do, typically. We'll see a little bit more in a second about World Bank stuff. But in this one case, it's just one obvious one, the arrow is pointing to Angola. Angola didn't receive any money for uh, fishing and uh, agriculture and forestry in those years from the World Bank, nor did any foundation spend any money on Angola. Uh, and in fact, I've seen that a lot, for, particularly for Angola, not very much funding goes there. Now, that doesn't mean that it's being neglected necessarily. It just means this is a good starting point for trying to dig deeper, ask the question, what's, why isn't any funding going there if they, if they have a need? One of the things that we're most proud of right now is, the, um, is a new site that we also built uh, called washfunders.org. And this is live and it's freely available to the public. And this is the map that's on that site. And what we're trying to, uh, basically the Hilton Foundation asked us to build this because they wanted to find out all the foundations that are working in the water, uh, sanitation, and hygiene sector uh, around the world so they could collaborate with them potentially and see where there are trouble spots and see, you know, see where there are gaps and see where there's overlaps in funding and where they can collaborate. Uh, where it's on the map, where it's yellowish, it's basically where it, we used um, the World Bank's API to get the data. Uh, where it's yellowish, it means that uh, access to water, just to clean water in those countries is relatively low. So in some places it's like 40 or 50 percent of the population has access to good water, whereas the bluer countries like in Europe or you know Canada, United States, 
access to water is about 99 to 100 percent of the population. So parts of Africa, parts of Asia, parts of South America, obviously the, the developing world, uh, are, are, are suffering, uh, they experience a lot of problems with access to water and sanitation. And then the purple bubbles, the slightly bigger ones, are in some of those African countries. Uh, now, what I did here was combined uh, the, the purple bubbles, which is our data at the Foundation Center. Uh, the coloring of the countries is from World Bank data, but then you've got these uh, ye yellowish uh, bubbles, and those represent OECD funding, and OECD is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. It basically represents the World Bank and uh, the big donor countries like Sweden and the United States and the UK. So basically, it shows the, the yellow bubbles are almost always much bigger than the purple bubbles. Basically, and they cover almost every country. Uh, so foundations are a part of this puzzle, but only, only a small part. Then you can click on a country and get a profile, and you can see by the bar charts here, again, I really still really like really simple visualizations, uh, the purple bars, uh, you know, about $10 million a year given from foundations to water projects in Kenya. Look at the second chart at the bottom. Uh, it's really no comparison by 2008 and 9. It's $100 million a year from the, uh, from the large donor countries. So if we actually put the foundation funding next to the OECD funding, it, the purple bubbles would be too small to be displayed here, so that's why I split them out. Um, and then you click on it and you get some grant records. Uh, and you can find out who exactly is operating in those countries, what the names of the foundations are, and uh, descriptions about the projects. This helps foundations find each other. Uh, some of the next things we're doing uh, is, is basically we're going to be coding things to an international standard, the International Aid Transparency Initiative called EADI, and we're going to be working with the World Bank to uh, set up some geocoding standards so that we can build uh, some more applications that combine this because we want to find out what's happening all around the world. And here's one example. The, the gold bubbles here are World Bank projects in Haiti and the blue bubbles again are the foundation center projects. Left side is the navigation for our subjects and the right side is the sub subject um, navigation for the World Bank. And this is under this is just a prototype right now, but what we want to start doing is add every single country's you know, like the Sweden's and the United States' is, you know, projects in Haiti, because after a disaster like what happened in Haiti recently, the world found out nobody knows what's going on on the ground. The United States doesn't know what the UK is doing in, the, in Haiti. Foundations don't know what the other ones are doing. And then you got folks like Sean Penn coming in there, running their own operations. It's just a, there's just such a wide array of actors. Uh, what we in the World Bank want to try to do is say, can we collect everybody together and find out what the total story is? Um, I'm, I'm going to breeze through a couple of other uh, things to the resources uh, that I think are really interesting. Uh, if you go to maps.worldbank.org, there's some other examples. This one is mapping for results, and this shows World Bank projects uh, by type of project and where the projects are. And you see there's a pie chart there on the right that's all, that also show you the breakdown. Uh, this shows how active the World Bank is uh, in, in, in India. And uh, it's a very good example. It's a very uh, elegant way of navigating around and finding stuff. And I, I like this application uh, a lot. Um, this is also, actually, this might not be map. This might be data.worldbank.org. But regardless, this is like a kind of a panel, a multi-panel thing where you can um, you see lots of little visualizations. Um, in some cases, they might be called spark lines if they're really tiny. But it gives you a little dashboard summary of lots of stuff about Uganda in this case. You can see that their debt might have gone down, you might see the education has kind of gone up and then flattened out, a few other things. I think this is a great example of getting a quick snapshot of, of, of something. Uh, this one is uh, aiddata.org and it is um, also kind of in cooperation with the World Bank but it also shows uh, projects from other entities, other big donors in, in Africa. And then below that, the, the kind of modeled color, I believe uh, is, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it's showing rainfall. Um, so it's kind of a mashup in a way, but it's, uh, it, it's a very important one, especially if you're covering things like water or agriculture. And this one is not, this is from data, this is from the United States government, is not a very pretty map. It doesn't really show you anything like totally fascinating, but this is something that the Foundation Center doesn't even track. So I did a quick search and found this. These, are, these bubbles uh, basically so uh, funding from the United States government for folks who want to teach American history. 
So these are grants from foundations, these are grants from the United States. It's something that we want to start tracking, but it kind of tells, tells me a story, uh, you know, in a way, of course, we know there's a concentration in the Northeast and the Southwest uh, because of uh, population centers in Chicago, but uh, there are a few other ones out there, like in Montana, a few other places sprinkled around. Um, this one, again, is for reference. This is a, a list of the different types of utilities and tools that can be used. Uh, I use almost all of these on a regular basis. This would be for reference to get people started. If anybody's already doing visualizations, it might be kind of boring, but this might be a good reference when you're starting to look at uh, applications for your, for your own use. Um, and so I got a couple minutes left. I'll, I'll just go through the, the final takeaways. The Foundation Center has a lot of data on U.S. international philanthropy, and a lot of it's going to be available soon through APIs. We've got a lot of free products, and uh, some of it is, 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 is we're trying to make it cooler and cooler and have more and more that's available for free. Uh, and and it, it's, it's, we've, we've got a lot of data and a lot more coming. Uh, second, and this is an important one, is that good visualization basically requires, you know, you, you have to curate it. It's not just, you're not just going to find data and have it magically be able to create visualizations with it and make a convincing argument. And lastly, uh, and this is the, my most important one, is, you know, is it accurate, you know, when you look at the visualization and when you create it, does it help sustain an argument? If you're not exploring the data and you're showing the data, you want to you want to show something to make the argument really clear. And ultimately, did it help make a decision? If a visualization doesn't help you make a decision, then it just becomes something cool. And you go, "Wow, that's awesome!" And then you go away from it, and you realize you didn't really learn very much uh, from it. Um, I've seen a lot of those, and I don't remember what they were trying to tell me. So, simple is good, and does it help someone, a decision maker, make a decision? Uh, and uh, that, that is it. This is my contact information. Anybody can feel free to email me. And if there's any confusion about the links or the resources or anything, f please feel free to, uh, to ask me. Okay. Thank you, Jake. That was a lot of really great information. No, sorry. <laughs> no, it's great. Um, so I'm going to take a look to see if there are any questions that have come in. Um, it looks like Rebecca had a couple of questions. Uh, her first one, and you know, this is just good background information, is what does API stand for? Oh, yeah, sorry. APIs uh, are application programming interfaces. Basically means web, web services. Basically a way for uh, you to get information directly uh, online using a URL. Instead of having to go to a website and downloading a, an Excel file, you'd be able to type in a URL with some parameters at the end of that URL into a browser, let's say, and get just, just you know, the raw data. Okay, great. And you said um, the second, the P stands for programming, correct? Yes, application okay. programming <laughs> interfaces. Yeah, yeah, it just, it broke up just for one second. Oh, sorry, sorry. That. Oh, it's not your fault. Um, and then her other question was, she was saying that these international resources are really helpful, but are there any resources that break down funding by category by state, I presume in the United States? Uh, there are. We actually, George Ford is going to talk next about Foundation Directory Online, and there's a ton of stuff broken down by category in the United States. In fact, Foundation Directory Online is what focuses most on the United States, and a lot of our open data and the stuff I work on is international. So I think the next segment should answer those questions. Okay, great, thanks. And then we're having a bunch of other questions come in. Um, Bill is wondering, are there, do you have any suggestions for a startup nonprofit, I'm assuming, in creating or using data visualizations? Yeah, you know, I, you know, I, I hate to refer people to Google in, in a way, um, but it, they, they have a lot of very easy uh, APIs and data visualizations that you can use for the, for the web. It's a, it's a really good start, and they make it very simple to start doing. Um, the easiest case, you know, would be doing something in Excel, uh, you know, creating some charts and then just taking those images and putting them into slides. But for the web, I would suggest starting with, with Google's um, APIs. And then um, in the chart, and, um, if you guys are still seeing my screen. Um, yeah, we are. Go up several. This one, this slide has a bunch of bunch of stuff. Some of them are more advanced than others, but um, Google Charts and High Charts in the lower left. High Charts is excellent. Um, just need to know a little bit of JavaScript in most cases. Okay, great, thank you. And Melissa was wondering: Has data visualization been used to show funding gaps? Uh, yes, it has, and sometimes it has to be intuitive uh, in, a, in a way. Like it might not be obvious. I'm flipping back, back, back. Um, let's go to this one here. We can see um, 
and I'm going to escape out of it a little bit. If you can see where my mouse cursor is, if you look up here to Algeria and Libya, if you guys I don't know if you can see my cursor, but up okay. here okay. there is a need uh, for water access, but there's no funding. Uh, Afghanistan and 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 Iraq, uh, you know, foundations aren't operating there right now. It's, a, it's basically a war zone. Um, there's parts of Southeast Asia here. Basically, where you don't see bubbles, there, and and where it's basically yellow, where, where the country is yellowish, and where there are no bubbles, that's that's where you start figuring out where the gaps are. Okay, great, thank you. And we have, we do, we're having a lot of other questions. I'm going to take maybe two more questions before we hand it over to George, and the rest of the questions that are coming in, we will handle after George's section. Um, okay. Kathy has a very specific um, question. She says that she's trying to get funding for the development of a small fishing villages hospital. And her group traveled um, to De Marie to do surgery for one week. They plan on having a permanent presence there. Um, they need to build a mission house, women's center, water source for the town, et cetera. Um, so she was wondering if you had any recommendations of a site um, for her to, to look at. Um, she said that your maps show no money has gone to that area in Haiti, so that was helpful to my argument. Yes, if if it was uh, in what country again was it she was looking at? I believe Haiti. From her question. Haiti. Oh, it was in Haiti. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, great. Um, well, our our that that site, um, which I'm going to update very soon. Um, the world, uh, sorry, foundationcenter.org/slash/haiti will have some of that information. Um, other resources. I, you know, I would suggest emailing me, and I could put together a list um, because some of it I have to kind of vet to make sure we specifically talk about that. There are lots of great uh, sites that have information about different parts of the world, but not all of them have all parts of the world covered. So I need to do a little bit of research on that. But uh, for finding funding sources, basically that site I, I referenced earlier is the best so far. Okay, thank you. And um, just so everybody knows, you can see. Um, we, we will be sending out the presenter's emails in the follow-up email, so if you don't get a chance to jot that down today, you will still have um, that at your availability. And let me take a look. And then Danielle is wondering, when creating visualization, what types of software do you recommend? Um, that is a good, we're going back to this really boring slide here with just this grid. Um, I'm a big fan of open source, so I typically start with open source or, or and or free. Uh, if we look here at the, at these um, for mapping, I love open layers. It's great and it's free and it's open source. Esri is fantastic, but it costs a lot of money. So I would suggest if you want to get into to web mapping, I would say JavaScript as the the primary web related language. I would say open layers for mapping, and I would say high charts for charting. Uh, those those are the ones that I use all the time. If you're uh, you know into uh, statistics, I would say some of these desktop ones are are, are pretty good. Uh, if you want to do just desktop mapping, you could do like UDIG or QGIS. Um, you know, some people just do it in Photoshop and Illustrator and or, or Excel and just kind of you know have an image and post that image online. That's the easiest, simplest way. But but my by far my favorites are, are high charts and open layers. Okay, great, thanks. And um, Becky from TechSoup just chatted in just to remind us that Esri is also available to eligible nonprofits through TechSoup's donation um, program. So uh, yes. <laughs> we'll send that that's out. A good recommendation. And that, that, that's how we get that. We, we actually get a discount through TechSoup for Esri stuff also. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we'll, we'll send the link out about that um, in the follow-up email as well so everybody has a chance to take a look at that. Um, so with that, what I wanted to do is I wanted to go ahead and ask one additional polling question. Any of the other questions that have come in, we will take a look at after George's section, but I do want to make sure George has time to provide his um, um, rundown on the Foundation Directory online. So really quick, before I give control to George, I'm going to bring up one additional polling question, which is, do you subscribe or have you subscribed in the past to Foundation Directory Online. And you can select, I currently subscribed, I subscribed in the past, or you have never subscribed. So I'm going to give you just a few more seconds. Looks like about 58% of you have voted. 
And of course, if you don't, are, if you are not familiar with Foundation Directory Online or don't know what it is, we will be talking about that in just a couple of minutes. But you can select I have never subscribed in that case. I'm going to give you five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And it looks like 22% of you do currently subscribe, 12% have subscribed in the past, and 66% have never subscribed. So I think this will be um, a really illuminating presentation to find out a little bit more about Foundation Directory Online. So everybody, thank you for sharing your information. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and give control of the screen over to George. So George, go ahead and take it away. Okay. Thanks. Uh, well, hello everyone. I'm uh, George Ford. I'm the product manager for online subscription services here at the Foundation Center, including Foundation Directory Online. And I'm going to be discussing um, how sort of pivoting here from some of the work that we as an organization do to show the reach of philanthropy and the, you know, the impact of philanthropy through data visualization tools over to um, how a grant seeker, how a grant seeking organization can use some, uh, some mapping and charting features within our premier grant seeking product to help them uh, in the grant seeking sort of prospect development process. So it's one data point among many in answering the question, is this a, um, is this a foundation that represents a, um, a good, likely uh, a funding prospect for me? And first, a little overview of what Foundation Directory Online is. Uh, those of you who already subscribe know some of this. Uh, it is our database of over 100,000 grant makers, these are US-based uh, private foundations as well as corporate giving programs and grant-making public charities. As well as their grants that we have over, the actual number right now is over, it's almost 2.8 million grants. These are grants made going back to 2003. Um, and they're, they're, it's already starting to include some 2012 grants. Uh, we do. Now, as Jake was saying earlier, the data is based primarily on the 990 PF. Uh, we do have some, or many really, foundations who submit to us their grant data uh, electronically, so we're able to sort of keep ahead of having to wait for the next set of uh, 990s to be released by the IRS. So you can search grant makers, you can search that set of grants at the professional level of Foundation Directory Online, which we'll be talking about today. You can also search a database of sponsoring companies, and you can have a keyword searchable database of 990s and 990PFs, as well as Power Search, which lets you search across all of those databases and several more at once. Uh, you can save your searches and tag different records. You can export results lists. We'll take a look at some exporting to spreadsheet features when we look at the maps. Uh, see detailed funder por portfolios, including the maps and charts that we'll be looking at, uh, and, yeah, including the grant maps and grant charts. These last couple of things I mentioned are available at the professional level. And at this point, I'd like to point out that Foundation Directory Online is a subscription product. Um, you, you know, there's available at several different plan levels with a, with a price associated with them. But in addition to that, so this isn't too sales pitchy, FDO at the professional level is also available to use for free at our own libraries. We have five of them, uh, New York, Atlanta, Cleveland, Washington, D.C., and San Francisco. It's also available at our network of cooperating collections, which is, I think at this point, over 450 um, libraries and other organizations that, um, that carry our, our set of core products, including FDO. So you can use these features for free at any of those locations. The maps and charts we'll be looking at, um, the, the, you'll see where we have grants indexed from a funder going back to 2003. Uh, we map and chart them, and you can drill down and explore with a few different variables and work with the data a little bit. Uh, you can view by year, grant subject, or recipient type. Um, you can drill down to different sublevels on the map or the chart, and then finally get to the point where you can actually view a grant record and get a little more of a story of what the, the funding was and what it was meant for. 
There are several tools available, including uh, just making simple images from these uh, for later reference, generating PDF copies, and most valu valuably of these three is exporting the tabular data uh, so you can work with that. And with that, I'm going to switch over to take a look at Foundation Directory Online so we can take a look at how you get access to this data and working with it. Um, so this is the power search screen that we were looking at earlier. Now for this, the, all of these maps and charts are available at the grant maker level. So you're going to get to them at first by searching for a particular grant maker. And I don't want to get too bogged down in, in the, all of the uh, ways you can, you can set criteria. Uh, I want to do a fairly basic search so I get a good large set of results. So I'm going to start in the field of interest area and I'm just going to look for this field of interest tells me this, these are things that the funders are interested in funding. And I'm going to look for a nice broad category, which is arts grants. And I also want to know, okay, well, where do they direct their funding? Where do these grant makers direct their funding? So I'm going to choose California because I, I, let's say I'm a, a California-based nonprofit. I want to know who funds there. So I want to choose California, but I also want to go ahead and select national for funders, lar particularly larger funders that give nationally, which can include California, even if they don't specify. Um, as you can see here at the search grant makers level, there are many other uh, search criteria available to you. Grant maker location, types of support, uh, you can look for names of trustees, officers, and donors, and different types of grant makers, range searching. Uh, if anyone has quite general, because we're focusing just on the maps and charts, if anyone has general questions for me about using the application and what's available and how to search it, uh, my contact information will be up at the end of the presentation and you can get in touch with me directly about those more general questions about the product. Um, for this though, I'm just going to take this very basic search. I'm going to sort it by total giving. And when I get my results, I'm going to take a look at which funder I'm more interested in, in learning more about. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select the Ford Foundation. Um, and this is their funder profile. This is where I can find out everything I need to know about who to contact, about application information, uh, background, any limitations on their giving, uh, who's on their board, what staff do they have, what key staff, some selected grants. Uh, and, and other information um, germane to the grant seeking process. I can access, I can learn more about their grants several different ways. The first is very simply I can search through them using this tab of the profile. I can list all of them or I can specify by certain uh, criteria. But to get sort of the main event, uh, I can also skip that step and just see those grants displayed on a map. And Jake was speaking earlier about sort of the, the clarity of simple visualizations. And these maps, while, you know, not the most high tech or elaborate, do, I think, a good job of telling that or, or giving that simple information in a relatively clear way. Um, or important information in a clear way. And the map, the U.S. map you see here, it's a simple shading. It, the, the shading represents total grant amount. And obviously the, the, the darker shades of blue are states where more grant money has uh, been provided by this foundation. I can see the aggregate information at the top above the map, uh, everything that we have indexed for the Ford Foundation, 9,000 grants going back to 2003 for over $3 billion. Um, and if I want to learn more about that, I can see two ways. I can look at the table below that and see, okay, each state or district, what's the amount, how many recipients, and how many grants. If I want to get a snapshot of that as well, just by pointing at any of the states on the map, I can see that aggregate data state by state from the Ford Foundation just by viewing that. Now, the search I conducted was specific to arts grants. So, these these are all their grants. I want to specify. I want to be a little, you know, more closer to what I was looking for. So I'm going to select arts and culture from this recipient type uh, menu on the left. You also have the option of viewing the same map 
by primary grant subject. Um, a word about that uh, that distinction, you know, it's it's essentially the same taxonomy. It's how we code. In the case of primary subject, this is how we code the grant that has been given. Recipient type is again, mostly the same taxonomy, but it's how we've coded the recipient organization. So it's your choice whether you're interested in seeing, I want to see all the arts grants, or I want to see all the grants to the arts organizations. Whichever it is that's your priority, you'd make that selection. And let's say I'm an arts organization of some sort in California. I want to know who, what's been given to organizations like mine, so I'm going to choose the recipient type. I can copy this map. I mentioned the tools earlier. I can create a, an image. I can uh, print and save it in PDF form. I can also export that data to spreadsheet. So I've just clicked that export link. And that should open for me a uh, spreadsheet. Oh, there it is. I just need to open it. And that's going to give me a table of data that I can then, you know, slice and dice and do whatever I would like with. At the top I can see, you know, if I save this and want to share it with colleagues, I can see at a glance what it is. These are Ford Foundation grants. This is the total grants amount, a number of recipients, a number of grants that are represented here in this table. These are the parameters that I narrowed it to. And I can see all the states and the grant amounts, recipient and grant counts. So let's drill down now to California, uh, which is the state that I'm interested in. When I do that, I get a new map. Again, I can create the same spreadsheet, but now with just the California data. I can also view this data. I have a few choices. Right now, by default, I'm looking at it by county. Again, I can see the, the totals and the number of recipients and grants. I can also take a look at the same data by city, uh, zip code. And then most recently, we added congressional district, which is going to be uh, a fun project for us will be having to redraw these maps to represent new congressional districts in several states, um, but we are aware <laughs> that that project is ahead of us. Um, but you can view grants by congressional district. So let's go back to county, and if I select a particular county to learn more about what was funded there, now I get to my list of recipients. And at every step along the way here, I can see the summary of what I'm looking at. I could also have some breadcrumb links here so I don't get lost. I can jump back to whatever map I'd like to look at. And I can resort this. It's By default, it's uh, sorted by which recipient has received the most in funding. I can also take a look at which recipient has received the most, the, the highest number of grants. In this case, it's the Sundance Institute. If I select them, here are all their Ford grants. I can look at the newest one first. See what I'm doing there? I'm just clicking column headers to uh, resort. And then lastly, I open up a grant profile, a uh, grant record, and I can see all of the data that we have available to share with you about this grant. Uh, recipient information, their URL, how we've coded them, uh, are the type of recipient codes. Um, these media, film, video, or media television codes are subcategories of arts and culture, which is why this came up in my results, as well as the recipient in my 90s. Information on grants, including a description of the grants. That description isn't always available. Uh, it's very nice and very helpful when it is, when we have it and we can share it. Uh, the grant subject codes. And because we're already in the other screen looking at the full grant maker record, all we have here is just the very basic grant maker information. Um, but that's a good example of a typical grant record and what you can find out there. And again, just one way of accessing that is using the maps and charts. There are other ways, including just conducting a grant search, conducting a grant maker specific grant search, or using the charts that we're going to look at in just a moment. I want to go back to my first screen just to point out that we also have, while Foundation Directory Online at the moment only contains U.S.-based grant makers, we do have uh, the grants that they have made to non-U.S. recipients. And um, if, I, if that's available for the grant maker I'm looking at, I can just select World Map and then I can see with the U.S. grayed out, I can see all of their 
uh, grants or you know grants that they've made around the world, and you know in much the same way as in the U.S. map, I click to drill down. In this case, you just go. We don't have sub levels within the, the country level internationally. So when you click a country, you go right to the recipient list, and then as I demonstrated a moment ago, you can go right into the grant record uh, from there. Um, so those are the grant maps. Now you, you will have noticed in that demonstration that as far as the type of recipient or subject code, I can only go as deep as that first level category, arts and culture. Uh, but if I want to learn more about grants made to organizations that are like my own, I probably want to be more specific than that. Am I a museum? Am I a dance troupe? Am I an orchestra? Uh, the charts that we're looking at now will allow you to do that in much the same way of you know, drilling down to, to sublevels. Again, I can uh, look at just certain years. Again, I can see all of the aggregate data. I can export this data to, to a uh, spreadsheet. Um, but if I select arts and culture, that set of grants that I was looking at on the map, now I can uh, drill down from that category and see some of the subcategories and start getting a more specific story about what sorts of organizations were funded. Uh, media and communications, like the one that we looked at, the record that we looked at for some Sundance Institute would be somewhere in this set, this media communication set. But let's take a look at the performing arts. And now I get a third level. Uh, I can see the table of these different third level categories as well as the uh, aggregate counts and dollar amounts. And if I go one level deeper, one more drill down, now I have my recipient names. Um, just like in the table we were looking at a moment ago, I can resort by grant amount or grant count. Uh, <clears throat> because as you know, the use case that we started with is I'm based in California. So I want to look at the locations of these recipients and maybe find a uh, you know, California-based organization. So here's one. It's in... Uh, located in California, it's the Cornerstone Theater Company. They've received three grants from Ford, totaling $345,000. Uh, and I can see all of these grants. The most recent one was from 2010. And just like from the map view, I can go right to that record uh, and see what this grant was for, learn a little more about who Cornerstone is, what they do, uh, and, and the purpose of this grant, what kind of work it was funding. Uh, also, the duration of this grant, in this case, it's a multi-year grant. It was for a year and a quarter. Um, that's an overview of what you can do with the grant maps and charts in Foundation Directory online at the moment. Uh, I want to talk just for a moment. I want to leave some time for all of the questions and answers we have on both parts of the presentation. Uh, but I do want to take a minute to do two things. And the first, if I go back to my slide presentation is tell you about something that's um, kind of around the corner on the horizon for Foundation Directory Online. The maps that we were looking at in our example were all of the data is based on where is the recipient organization located. Uh, as you know, all of you in the nonprofit sector know, the location of the recipient isn't always the same as the location of the audience that's ultimately served by that grant money. And we're hearing that there's more and more of, a, 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 of an appetite to know, okay, it, it's fine that the grant went to this organization in this city, but they're serving populations in, in all of these areas. I want to know who's been helped by this grant. I want to know where those people are. We're planning on adding uh, this year to these grant maker specific maps and chart, or to the grant maker specific maps, the geographic area served data what you will be able to do is toggle between the recipient view that we were looking at a moment ago and a geographic area served view. And in this, uh, it's not exactly a mock-up, it's a live thing, but it, it's uh, the current iteration of, of this, what this prototype looks like. Uh, you would see um, the same shading in countries, and if you were to, to go to the US level, you'd see states, just like we saw. But you'd also see these sort of bubbles, and those represent um, regions, uh, different, you know, different regions such as Sub-Saharan Africa 
or global programs or you know at the US level there'll be some US specific regions like mid atlantic or new england or whatever so you can you can view the data at the sort of hierarchical state city level or you can look across different regions and see the population served by that grant data the other thing i wanted to take just one second to do is go a little off the board because I wasn't initially part of the presentation, but I thought it was relevant, particularly to some of the questions that came up earlier about identifying need and response, a couple of the questions that were asked to Jake. We have a completely separate product. It's called Foundation, I'm sorry, it's called Philanthropy Insight. <clears throat> the audience for this is primarily grant makers, but it's also very useful for research, just general research in philanthropy. And that's what this is designed to do, is to tell that story. Uh, you can plot on this map a few different things. Where grant makers are located, where recipients are located, coming soon down the line also the geo area serve that I was speaking of a moment ago. And then also data on um, demographic indicators and filters like that identify areas of need such as unemployment or poverty. So on the same map you would be able to see where is there a high level of poverty and where are their grants going that are specifically intended to address poverty. You'll be able to see that in one glance and tell the story that way. Uh, if anyone is interested in more learning more about Philanthropy Insight, you can get in touch with me and I can put you in touch with the product manager for Philanthropy Insight. Um, so that is, we have, I guess we have a good 10 minutes or so left, uh, that is using maps and charts in Foundation Directory Online and of very quick introduction to Philanthropy Insight. And uh, with that, I think I'm happy to take some questions about any, any of what I was speaking about. Thanks, George. I really appreciate that. I'll leave your screen up for just a couple of seconds so people can jot down your contact information if they need. Um, we have had a lot of questions come in. Um, we, we've had several questions just just um, asking about the pricing again in general and um, how to get to the libraries and the cooperating collections. I did put a link to the cooperating collections um, in the chat box so, and we'll be sending that out as well. Um, but I don't know, George, if you wanted to just touch on that really quickly. Yeah, again. Um, the screen I'm sharing now is uh, one of our sites is called Grantspace. It's our hub for anything and everything useful to our, our nonprofit audience, um, training, and a lot of other things. Part of what's included here is a way to access or way to find the nearest cooperating collection to you. You can search by zip, uh, you know, browse by certain states, and you can find the nearest cooperating collection or foundation center library. So you can see the URL here on the top, grantspace.org slash find us, and you can find the nearest, um, the nearest cooperating collection or Foundation Center Library. As to pricing, um, for what we were looking at in Foundation Directory Online, that's available at the FDO professional level. Pricing for that ranges, uh, it's available monthly, annual, or two-year basis. Uh, monthly, it's $179.50 uh, per month, $1,295 per year, and I believe the two-year price is $3,600. Those are all for single user. There's additional rates for multi-user subscriptions, and we also have a separate, um, a separate model called institution-wide access. That's basically IP authentication for, for example, a university campus could have site-wide access, and the pricing varies pretty widely, and it's based on your your FTEs. So there are a lot of different um, there's there's a lot of different prices for a lot of different plan levels, and if you're interested in more about that, you can contact me directly, and I'll, I'll put that, uh, put my um, contact information back up. Okay, thank you, George. Um, Alexandra had a question specifically for you as well. Um, she was wondering, what does the category selected grants contain? Selected grants on the main um, grantmaker profile it's, it's a set of grants that the grantmaker has provided to us that are recent and that they feel are representative of what they do. Not every grant, not every grant maker provides us with one. Uh, but if they do, we can post it on that main profile screen. What that allows us to do is, if we haven't indexed and coded all of their grants from their 990s, or if, for example, it's a corporate giving program that doesn't file a 990 PF, 
so they don't their grants aren't all itemized and open it gives us at least at a minimum a snapshot of the grants that they've given for the example we were looking at with Ford the selected grants while useful aren't as useful as just you can you can look at all of them or just about all of them you can look at you can search the grants or look at the map and view much closer to the whole set of their grants but it can be particularly valuable if you're looking at a smaller foundation and they said you know here's here's a set of 10 recent grants and you know th this is what they are we can post that on their main profile screen okay thanks and Troy was wondering why don't organizations break costs down by the nonprofits income I don't um, and I can I'm forward sure you. I can forward you that question later if you want okay, to look yeah, at yeah. it. Okay. I'm not quite sure that I, I'm going to have to mold that one because I'm not quite okay. sure I understand what it is, but I'll, okay. I'll get back to the, the person who asked it. Yeah, great, thanks. And um, just so everybody knows, I know there, we do have a lot of questions still out there, and we only have about three minutes left, so I'm going to just take probably a couple more questions. Anything else that you asked, um, I will be forwarding those questions to the presenters, and they can email you back, and I put their email addresses if you don't get a response um, within a week or so. You can enter, or if you have any additional questions. I'm um, really quick, I'm going to go ahead and take control back and just show my little question slide so I can start that. Um, I did want to go back to a couple of the questions that we had from Jake's presentation. So let me take a look. Um, I know we had one question that was asking, what is the difference between Google Charge and Google Fusion tables? Uh, that's a good question. Um, Google Fusion tables is basically a way that you can upload your data to Google, and Google will take that data and turn it into charts. Um, it's a little bit... There's some other nuances about it, and I haven't used Fusion Tables a lot, but, the, but I know that the overall idea is that you, you, you upload your data to one of Google's servers and then create uh, different charts based on that. In Google Charts, you don't necessarily have to do it that way. Um, you can just hit, hand it a small amount of data for exactly the chart you want to make. I hope that answers the question. Kyler, are you still there? Yes, I am. Sorry. Um, my <laughs> go-to webinar muted me for just a second. Um, Danielle was wondering, as a follow-up to her question about software, um, she was thinking more about Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and um, software like that, so she didn't know if you had any recommendations along those lines. Um. Let me get back to her about that because it's a more complicated thing. I mean, um, uh, send me her email address and I'll answer that in more detail and I'll get more to what she's kind of getting at because if it's for mapping uh, stuff but it's for images like you do in in, um, in the Adobe products, I would say Esri, you know, ESRI is the best one. But there are some that exist out there that can let you do really cool charts, cool visuals that are static. Uh, like you would do in, in, in Illustrator or, or Photoshop, but uh, I can send her a list. And, uh, I have the feeling she's got something very specific in mind, so I want to try to help her with exactly what she needs. Okay, great. And I'm going to ask just one more um, question, and this one I believe is for George. Um, this is asking, can you do a search for all the grants throughout the U.S. received by specific national organizations uh, with regional locations, for example, like Boys Club, Boys and Girls Clubs? Uh, the maps and charts in FDO are grant maker by grant maker. So uh, you would have to do what we were looking at, which is just going by state or going by subject areas as opposed to going by um, the name of the recipient. But uh, if you go to um, if you just go to the main search grants tab, and we're not talking about maps and charts anymore, if you just want to search all the grants in the database. You can search by recipient name and then you can see in your results list all of the grants made to whatever organization or organizations 
uh, that you're interested in. It's just you'd be seeing, you know, the list of these are the grant makers and these are the, these are the, all the grants itemized. Uh, you can't map and chart them, but you can you can get them as results and then go in and, and look at the uh, grant records. Okay, great. Um, so everybody, any additional questions that were out there, we will go ahead and follow up with you later. And then if you have any additional questions that you think up later, just go ahead and email us and we will, we will try to respond appropriately. Um, and I do want to thank both George and Jake for a great presentation today. It's really been a treat. Um, a little bit about who the Foundation Center is. Um, you can see a little bit about them up here. Um, they're a leading source of information about philanthropy worldwide, and through data analysis and training, they connect people who want to change the world to the resources they need to succeed. And then also a little bit about who TechSoup is, um, which that's the organization I'm from. We're a nonprofit organization like um, so many of you out there, and we are trying to provide the technology resources and just the technology for you to be able to fulfill your mission and potential. And you can find out a lot of, more about TechSoup on the TechSoup ORG website. You can learn, you can hear about um, articles on our learning center. You can read blog articles on our blog. You can find products in our product donation center and don't forget to go ahead and subscribe to our TechSoup newsletters by the cup and new product donation alert. Um, so with that I do want to just take one moment and thank Citrix Online for the go-to webinar software that um, has provided this webinar so thank you to them and again thank you to Foundation Center for a great presentation and um, thank you all for listening today please take a couple of minutes and fulfill or fill out our survey at the end of this presentation because that really does help us in uh, creating new and better webinars in the future so thank you everybody and I hope you all have a great day